Good morning, and welcome to another Daily Dose of Love from Fair Bluff Baptist Church. Sunday is Mother's Day, so we wanted to take this entire week and celebrate women. And today, I wanted to focus on one verse in particular that's found in Luke chapter 2, verse 19. And it follows the birth narrative of Jesus, and this is what it says. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now, I've been working on this all week, and so there have been lots of things that I've treasured through the years and have pondered in my heart. So I just wanted to share today, this is going to be a potpourri of Mother's Day remembrances. There are two poems especially that I love from the book, The Best Love Poems of the American People. The first one is called The Reading Mother. I had a mother who read to me sagas of pirates who scoured the sea, cutlasses clenched in their yellow teeth, blackbirds stowed in the hold beneath. I had a mother who read me the things that wholesome life to the boy heart brings, stories that stir with an upward touch, oh, that each mother of boys were such. You may have tangible wealth untold, caskets of jewels, and coffers of gold. Richer than I, you can never be. I had a mother who read to me. And then, you know, because we think that our little boys are just the absolute best, even our little girls, you know, because sometimes we don't always see with an objective eye because we love so deeply. This is one of my favorite poems out of this book. It's called, If I Only Was the Feller, while walking down a crowded city street the other day, I heard a little urchin to a comrade turn and say, Say, Chimney, let me tell you, I'd be happy as a clam if I only was the feller that me mother thinks I am. She thinks I am a wonder, and she knows her little lad could never mix with anything that was ugly, mean, or bad. Oh, lots of times I sit and think how nice t'would be, gee whiz, if a feller was the feller, that her mother thinks he is. My friends be yours a life of toil or undiluted joy. You can learn a wholesome lesson from that small untutored boy. Don't aim to be an earthly saint with eyes fixed on a star. Just try to be the fella that your mother thinks you are. A book that was one of my favorites, uh, and I think I gave this to Matthew when he was five years old, was Love You Forever. And you know it says, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Oh, the book tears me up every time. If, you don't, if you've never read it, you need to read it. And now what I wanted to do, I wanted to share just, oh, out of all the things through uh, the lifetime with my children. But I want to share just one thing from each boy that uh, I treasure especially. Uh, Matthew graduated from high school in 2003 and went to Presbyterian College and uh, he took um, New Testament in the fall and he took Old Testament in the spring. And he called me uh, one day and he said, Mama, have you ever read Proverbs chapter 31? I said, well, yes, I think I have. And I have this written in my Bible. My boys are very familiar with me calling them or texting them and telling them things that I've written in my Bible through the years. It was dated March 1st, 2004, and this is what I wrote. Matthew called from PC and said as he read this, he thought, this is my mama, beside Proverbs 31. I, and I continued, I think that is the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. And then for John Mark, uh, my boys grew up having three birthday parties each year. A family party, a school party, and a church party. So when I turned 50, I was expecting some surprise birthday party, which I did not get because everybody was too busy. Well, on my 60th birthday, they did give me a surprise birthday party, and I thought, ooh, what was I asking for? But by John Mark, uh, got a lot of friends and people from my past to write letters 
And the title of the book that he made was Like a Handprint on My Heart that comes from uh, a song in the musical Wicked. And um, there's a part in it that I love so much, and it says, Because I knew you, I have been changed for good. And at the end, I love the part that John Mark put his letter last, and he actually put his letter beside the letter from God, which I thought was precious. But he did a top 10 reasons why I love my mama because I had spoken at my daddy's funeral and had spoken on the top 10 reasons why I love my daddy. But he said his number 10 reason that he loved his mama. He said, I love that you love the same things as me. You name it. Les Mis, Whitney, Fried Shrimp, The Way John Piper Crafts a Sentence, Beating Jap at Scrabble, A Well-Placed Dash, We Both Love It, To Be Sure, we're two peas in a sovereign pod. My web, my favorite thing from web just came in the past few days because our first grandbaby, Grace, is going to be turning one tomorrow. And Webb said that he hopes by Mother's Day that he's going to be able to teach Grace to say Nana. And I'm going to close with a poem that I always had my second graders to memorize on Mother's Day so that they could say it to their mother. And if my mother were still here, I would love to say it to her. God made a wonderful mother, a mother who never grows old. He made her smile of the sunshine and he molded her heart of pure gold. In her eyes, he placed bright shining stars. In her cheeks, fair roses you see. God made a wonderful mother and he gave that dear mother to me. I pray that you have a wonderful Mother's Day. What a blessing from God mothers are. It's been a joy celebrating women this week with you. I pray that you have a mightily blessed day. And I'll leave a Saturday meditation tomorrow. And worship is coming Sunday.